Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Museum Munchkins, the last Museum Munchkins of the year. Today, we are going to be learning all about polar bears, and we're going to start by singing a song about polar bears. If you'd like to stand up on your feet. Now, this song is called If You're a Polar Bear, and it might sound a little bit like if you're happy and you know it. So we're going to pretend that we're polar bears in this song, and we're going to listen for the action that we're going to do along with our song so we can get our bodies moving a little bit this morning too. Are you ready to sing? All right, here we go. So the first one is, if you're a polar bear, romp around. And romping, when polar bears romp, that's kind of like they're running and jumping all at the same time. Can we try to do that? If you're a polar bear, romp around. Anyone can be a bear with beautiful white hair. If you're a polar bear, romp around. Very good. If you're a polar bear, give a roar. roar. If you're a polar bear, give a roar. Oh, anyone can be a bear with beautiful white hair. If you're a polar bear, give a roar. roar. Ooh, there's some scary polar bears out there. Now, if you're a polar bear, stand up tall and stretch your arms up as high as they'll go. If you're a polar bear, stand up tall. Oh, anyone can be a bear with beautiful white hair. If you're a polar bear, stand up tall, really tall, as tall as you'll go. Very good. Now this one is the polar bear's favorite. So are you ready? If you're a polar bear, take a swim. Can you swim? If you're a polar bear, take a swim. Oh, anyone can be a bear with beautiful white hair. If you're a polar bear, take a swim. Excellent job being polar bears, everyone. All right, I'm gonna set my guitar down because we're going to need to go upstairs into our exhibit so that we can learn and talk all about polar bears. So let's go. All right, hello, we are back up in From Curiosity to Science to check out this polar bear. Have you ever seen a polar bear before? Maybe you've been to the zoo and you've seen one there? Well, polar bears are a special type of bear that we only find in the wild way, way, way up north in the Arctic Circle, the very top of our planet. And, but we find them all around that Arctic Circle here in North America, in Europe, and in Asia, all along that Arctic Circle. And they are actually the largest species of bear alive on our planet today, growing up to 10 feet long and weighing as much as 1,500 pounds. That is a very big bear. Now, polar bears, because they live in such cold areas, are covered in a very dense area of fur. Their undercoat, the fur that's right up against their skin, is very warm and helps hold in a lot of the heat that their body makes. And the outer hair on top of them helps to protect them from wind and snow and helps them when they're swimming to help block out the water from getting to that under fur. Now, the outer coat might appear white to some people, but actually their hairs are transparent, which means we can see through them. So they're actually, their hair isn't white, it's see-through which is pretty interesting, I think. And the boy, uh, boy polar bears, just like lions, have extra long hairs on their front arms, almost like the male lion, where lion, boy have extra hair around their heads. Boy polar bears have extra long hairs that grow off of their arms, 
And that's just sort of like the same reason, uh, they use it sort of the same way that lions use their manes, just kind of to show everybody else who's boss, who's got the longest arm hair. Have you ever heard of such a competition? Who's got the longest arm hair? So they have all of that fur on their bodies to help keep their bodies warm. And they also have a layer of fat underneath their skin that can be up to four inches thick to help protect them from the cold too because they spend a lot of the time in the snow and the ice, but they also spend a lot of their time in the water, in the freezing cold waters um, way at the top of our planet. So they need that extra insulation to help keep them warm. In fact, all that fur and all that fat on their bodies is so good at keeping all the heat up inside their bodies and keeping their bodies warm that when we use, when scientists use a special infrared camera, which is a camera that we can use to actually see heat coming off animals, polar bears look almost invisible because they have so much of their heat inside their body and no one's escaping through all that fat and hair. Now, speaking of invisible, polar bears often look are really hard to see up in the Arctic where they live because of that whitish color to their, uh, to their fur. So they blend in or camouflage with the snow. But as polar bears get older, much like you can see with this one, their hair starts to turn more of a yellowish color. So not, still not super yellow, but there's kind of a yellowish tint to it. So maybe if you've ever seen a polar bear like at a zoo or something, if it's an older polar bear, their fur is kind of a yellowish color. And in fact, some polar bears um, that are at zoos in really warm places or warmer places, especially warmer from where they're used to living, their fur can actually start to turn green from algae growing on it. Pretty interesting. Have you ever seen a green polar bear before? But luckily they take lots of baths in the water, lots of swimming time, and they can wa help wash that algae off. Now polar bears are carnivores. And in fact, they are hyper carnivores. Can you try saying that word carnivore with me? Carnivore. So a carnivore is an animal that eats other animals. And polar bears are considered hyper carnivores because they get more than 70% of their diet just from eating meat. Now their favorite foods are seals, particularly harbor seals and bearded seals. Um, but some really big and brave polar bears will even hunt bigger seals like walruses. Now they have to be pretty brave to go and fight a walrus and try to eat a walrus because walruses are really, really large animals. And they have a very good sense of smell. So polar bears can smell a seal through the Arctic air up to a mile away and under three feet of snow. If they've buried themselves under the snow, the polar bear can still smell them with its nose. And like I said, polar bears love to spend time in the water. They love to swim. Um, so they actually can even swim for days and days at a time if they need to. But sometimes they mostly they swim for food, but they do also swim just for fun sometimes. Now, scientists actually tracked one polar bear who was swimming so long, she lived in the water for nine days. That is a really long trip to go swimming. Long days straight to reach the ice from the land that she was walking on. And then she walked another 1,100 miles once she reached that ice. So she went on a really long adventure when those scientists were tracking her. Now, we think that she only swam as far as she did because of all the open ocean that was all, uh, there during the winter. So normally, there's lots and lots, or in the past, there has been lots and lots of sea ice for the polar bears to walk around on and break holes in looking for seals and things. We're looking at the cracks where the sea ice is breaking up to find, the find, find seals where they might hop up on the ice to take a rest. But as less and less of that sea ice appears every year, polar bears have to spend more time in the water. So actually, climate change 
has made less and less ice every year for the polar bears, so they're actually needing to swim a lot further than they might have normally had to um, back in history. So climate change is actually making the polar bears spend more time in the water right now. Now polar bear mothers, like this one here, are very patient animals. Now do you have a parent who's very patient at your house? So in the fall, a mother polar bear will burrow into the snow and the ice to make her den where she will spend the rest of the winter with her cubs. Now her cubs are usually born between November and February and they spend their first few months not doing much of anything except for drinking their mother's milk and growing, growing out their fur um, and growing their bodies and getting a little bit bigger because they're born kind of small and they're born with their eyes closed so they can't see anything, which is okay for them because luckily they're in a big snowy den underneath the snow and they can't see anything under there anyway. So, but when the spring comes, then the mother bursts out of her snow den with her cubs and they get to see the world for the first time as the, they get to see the sun for the first time. They get to learn how to run and walk and jump. And the mother finally gets to start digging under the snow to find any sort of food she can find, even if it's grasses and plants like that, that she might not normally eat, but she's got to get some food into her. And then once her cubs are strong enough, they will make the trek out to that sea ice so their mother can get a proper meal looking for some seals. Sometimes the mothers will go as long as eight months without eating a single thing. That is a really long time to not have anything to eat. So the polar bear mothers are pretty tough, pretty strong animals. Now polar bears are the biggest predators where they live, sometimes called an apex predator, which means they're the biggest thing and nothing around in their environment eats them, but they will eat everything else. So polar bears are the biggest predators where they live. And actually a lot of other animals depend on polar bears to survive, not just their own cubs, but lots of other animals too. So actually polar bears are considered a keystone species. That means there are other animals in their environment that depend on them and their environment depends on those animals sticking around for the survival of the rest of the animals in their environment. And that is just one of the reasons that it's so important for us as humans to be taking care of our environment, taking care of our climate, and making sure that the polar bears stick around for a lot longer. Now, I've got a story about a polar bear who is in the snow going for a walk, but we're not quite sure where he's going. So let's head back to our classroom so we can check it out. All right, so today's story is A Polar Bear in the Snow by Mac Barnett and art by Sean Harris. A Polar Bear in the Snow. There is a polar bear in the snow. Do you see him? Still asleep. He lifts his nose to sniff the air. And he awakens. You can see the polar bear now. There is a polar bear in the snow. Can you see him now? Here's his arms, his head, and nose, and eyes, and ears. Blends in with all that snow, though. Where is he going? Is he going to visit the seals? No, he is not hungry. Is he going to hunker in a cave? No, his fur protects him from the storm. 
Look, there's snow, and the wind is blowing very hard on him, but his fur is protecting him. There's some Arctic foxes hiding in this cave, though. Is he going to meet a man? No! That polar bear doesn't like men. It doesn't like people. There is a polar bear in the snow. Where is he going? Oh! Do you see where he's going now? He is going to the sea! All those bubbles he made when he splashed into the water. He wants to play! Oh, look at all those polar bears. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve polar bears. Goodness, there's him swimming and playing in the ocean. And when he is done playing, he climbs back onto the snow. Where will he go then? Who knows? He disappeared into the snow. The end. All right, everyone, so today we're going to be making a fuzzy little polar bear picture using just a few supplies. I've got a piece of white paper here, a piece of blue paper, I've got some cotton balls. I have some white paint and a Q-tip and a paint tray. I've got a glue stick and some white glue. I could use either of these. My scissors and this silhouette of a polar bear. So I already printed this and cut this out. So you can download one of these on our website too, a little polar bear silhouette to use for this project. Um, if you go to our kids page, you'll find the activity for this for today and a whole bunch of other activities too that you guys can do. But you'll find our polar bear activity there too. So you can follow along with this activity. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white paper and I'm going to kind of cut it in half. And I need to make a big piece of ice using it. And that's what my polar bear is going to stand on. So I think I'm going to kind of leave this side and this side flat, but I'm going to kind of cut the rest of it so that it looks like a big piece of ice that my polar bear is floating on. I think I might make it go out straight like that and then it'll go down and then maybe curve alongside like this. Oh, I think I like that. Let's check that out how that looks. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think I'm going to put it just like that. So then I'm going to put some glue on the back of here just to hold it down. There we go. And then I'm going to stick this on my paper just like that. Cool. Now I have a platform for my polar bear to sit on. There we go. Now what I'm going to do I'm not going, I'm only going to use this to help me see where my polar bear is going to go. So I'm going to kind of put him on top of the ice like that. And then I'm going to take my marker here and I'm going to trace around the outside of the polar bear just like this. Now you could just glue this down too and stick cotton balls on top of it. I thought it would be fun if I was going to try to just sort of trace it like this so I would see where my polar bear is going to be and then I'm going to make it up, sort of appear with some cotton balls. So I'm going to take just a few cotton balls out of this bag. Let's take maybe, oh, there's five. Let's start with five and see how far that gets us. And we're going to pull them apart into lots of little fuzzy, fluffy little pieces. 
That's kind of fun. It's kind of a little bit messy, this part too, pulling cotton balls apart into little tiny fluffy pieces. And I'm gonna use my glue to stick these down into the shape of the polar bear that I drew. Lots of little fuzzy little pieces. Look at how many little pieces I got just from these few cotton balls. So you don't need very much. Okay, there we go. Now, let's take some glue. I could use a glue stick for this, but I want the glue, I think, to stay a wet for a little bit longer. So I'm going to smear this glue all over my polar bear shape like this. And actually I can get a little bit messy and take my finger and kind of smooth it out so it goes all over that shape. Go just like this. Now this will make the cotton balls kind of stick to your finger a little bit too, but that's okay. We don't mind getting a little bit messy when we're having fun and making crafts like this. All right, I got my glue all spread out like this. I could wipe a little bit of extra glue off of my paper. That's just fine. And now I can start taking my cotton balls and all that fluff that I pulled apart and start sticking it onto my polar bear. Oh, so cool. It's going to be really fuzzy and fluffy, I think, when I'm all finished sticking these cotton balls down on here. And it will almost, it's almost like as you, the more cotton ball pieces I put down, it's like it magically starts to have a polar bear appear on my paper. That's pretty cool, huh? Some more pieces in there. It's looking pretty good. What do you think? I think I might have just exactly enough cotton balls to fill in my whole polar bear. These ones pulled apart really nicely. There we go. Almost finished. I've just got a few more. Little, I need to put some on his feet, on his back feet here. Oh, I might have a little bit extra. Maybe I can go back and put another piece on his face, make his face a little bit fluffier too. There we go. Yeah, I think let's put one little more drop of glue on his face so I can give him a really fluffy face. Since I have this extra piece of cotton, oh, there we go. Wonderful. Now look at this big, fuzzy, fluffy polar bear. Now I'm not quite finished yet. What I think I'm gonna do too is, I've got this big extra piece of paper, and one of the things that we can do to help polar bears is actually, and other animals that are endangered, is actually conserve things and recycle things. So I'm actually gonna conserve this piece of paper and I'm going to, instead of just throwing it away, I think I'm gonna turn it into some ice mountains or maybe like a glacier or something in the background of my picture. So I'm just gonna kind of cut a little uh, sh mountain shape like this. And then let's, oh yeah, I think right about there. Let's get that glue stick again. I've got little bits of cotton stuck to my fingers. Let's glue this down. And now I've got one more thing we're going to do with some paint. There's lots of different things we're using on this picture, aren't there? Cotton balls and glue and paper and paint. And now I'm going to take my Q-tip and a little bit of white paint. And I can 
Now, since my paper is blue, and it already kind of looks like the water, I can show where the water is, where it stops like that on the horizon, and I could, oh, I could make some, make some waves on here, kind of make it look like the ocean. I don't have to put very much on. All the reflections of the sun and the sky and the clouds on the water, that might look really cool. Let's put some over here too. Just kind of making little zigzags like this. Let's put some more back over here too. I'll make sure I do it on both sides of my paper. So I get all of the water. And then, I don't know if you watched our caribou episode, but we also did some painting with Q-tips in our caribou episode too. And I had so much fun doing that, making kind of snowy snowflakes with a Q-tip as my paintbrush. But I thought I would add some snow to my snowy polar bear Arctic picture today too. So let's just get a little bit more paint for the water. Oh, I really like that. And now I can take my Q-tip, just make little dots like this. Not very much snow at all. Maybe it's just snowing a little bit. Or maybe, ooh, maybe, what if it's not snow at all? What if it's stars and it's a nighttime where this polar bear is? That could be cool too. What do you think? Is it snowing? Or are these stars? All right, maybe just a few more over here. Perfect. All right, and there we have it. A fun snowy Arctic scene with a fluffy, fuzzy polar bear. Thank you all so much for joining us for Munchkins all throughout 2020. I wanna wish everybody a happy new year and a happy 2021. I hope you guys had so much fun today learning about polar bears with me and I can't wait for another year of munchkins ahead and I hope that you join us there. If you make one of these pictures too, if you could share it with us on our Facebook at Kenosha Public Museum or you can tag us on Instagram too at Kenosha Public Museum. Uh, we would love to see your creations. Thank you so much and we will see you next year.